Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you 14 October, Columbus Day in America, so the Yanks won't be in today, or most of them won't be in. Let's take a look at what we're thinking. Um, got a few core positions on. We got to look at protecting, uh, or perhaps adding to. And then we got to find some fresh ideas um, to create new PL this week. Here's cable. Uh, we obviously think of this in sterling Swiss terms. You can see the sterling Swiss chart here. Uh, but it's basically the same chart, the same idea. You're long this stuff, um, and now you're looking to buy or add on pullbacks. Friday price action was pretty tough. Uh, we had that 100 point down move in three seconds uh, on like some misappropriated quote from Tusk. Um, I don't know. You got to keep it small and wide, wide and sloppy here, kind of. Um, kind of the way you have to survive this. You don't expect this to make a new low, which of course is 124, but it doesn't really help when you're at 126.12. Take a look at buying. If we get down to 125, you got to see what's going on. You got to follow the news closely um, and try and, if you're not core long, try and establish some sort of core long. There should be a lot of sideways action going into Friday, which is a summit meetings between the UK and the EU. Um, core long is the way. Whether you want to express this in sterling yen, cable, or sterling Swiss, as you see, the charts are all exactly the same. Euro is having trouble going up, even though we're bullish. Uh, we get, keep getting these wicks, which is never really a great sign. I expect today we actually are going to take out some stops below 110. We do have industrial production at 11 a.m. Swiss time in Europe. Really the only highlight of the day as far as news because uh, the U.S. is out today. Be careful of your longs. We still like core longs, uh, but we do expect some pressure on the downside today. Ideally, we get through 110. We go to 109.75, and then we close back up at 110.10. Uh, which will be a red bar, but more of a washout bar um, than anything. So this is what we think in Euro. Aussie, really slow and painful topside considering the tra trade deal. We got down to 67.72, which is a bit of a surprise. Um, not sure what to do with Aussie here. These highs are now important. Um, 68.10. Dollar CAD is a little bit more constructive just because of the, the bang bang numbers we saw on Friday. You want to sell this um, between 30 and 50. You want to be short Dollar CAD. Um, and also something worth noting CAD yen. Crossed the 200, closed above it on. Um, Friday, the 200 is 82.10. Uh, a little bit of wishy-washy stuff here, but CAD yen higher we do like. Uh, you might want to pick this stuff, pick this stuff up between here, 82 the figure, and 81.80 um, for a patient move higher. And this is going to be more CAD driven than yen driven. But you do have to be careful about downside on risk because we do think this mini deal um, has now been mispriced. But we'll talk about that when we get to stocks. But CAD yen long, uh, we do like, especially if we can close above 82.10 again today. But it's come a long way quickly, so be patient with your CAD yen longs here. Maybe, maybe even start buying 81.80 to 80. 8150 because um, it looks like we're going to have an inside quiet day today but we're seller we're sellers of high ones in dollar cad we're buyers of low ones in cad yen let's go to equities i don't really understand why we're at 76 the low is 67 i would have i would have smashed it at the open if i was a young buck um and I was 
looking to put on fresh risk because I thought the trade deal was really not a trade deal at all. It was just a bunch of horse shit. Um, but shops like JP Morgan are saying this is worth 10% from the 2760 area. So they think this is going to go to 3060, sort of make new highs. I don't agree with them, but of course there's so much of the flock that follows these guys. You just got to be careful in the first couple of days. You will see some buying here. Eventually we expect this to peter out. We do have earnings that will begin this week. Um, so that will add to the fun seeing, seeing what the uh, earnings come, how the earnings come out. Um, but we are not bullish this. Um, we talked about selling in that 90 area on Friday. I believe the high was 94, yeah. Um, at 75, it's a little bit tougher here. Uh, if you are still core short from 90, from 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, I would just leave that. Um, although put a tight stop now, your stop has to be 95 through 95 is important if we get up there. But we'll be looking to sell high ones. This is going to be very tactical. It'll be news dependent, uh, but count us as incredibly skeptical on this trade stuff. Let's look at our friends, the Boons, core short. We like this core short. We did sneak a new low in there uh, on uh, on Friday, down to 15. It was a tricky day Friday in Boons because we opened at 50 and we traded up to like, I don't know, 10 or something, 08. Oh, what did we trade up to? I'm sorry, we traded up to 15. And I remember when it was sort of figure two, and I was short on the day in the 80s. I was like, what the, what the hell are we doing up here? Um, but here we are again, uh, back lower. Uh, today, just because there will be lower liquidity and industrial production should come in poorly, we'll look to sell high ones short fixed income is the way um, and this is just because the market is core long fixed income we want to be and, and I think the, the in general people underestimate how long the market is fixed income and so we see lots of pain coming this is going to go a lot further than people think it hasn't even really started if you look at the yield um, in uh, on Boons, we haven't even crossed that crucial minus 40 basis points. So, core short, and on the day you want to sell high ones, but harvest PL if on your day trades, which then, of course, smooths out your PL on your long term trades. Um, this is what we've been doing for 30 years. There's two books, right? There's a position book, and then there's a what you call an alpha book or a, or a day trade book, whatever sexy name you want to give it. The short-term book adds P&L on a regular basis with very low risk. The medium-term book takes more risk and really is supposed to be your big alpha generator for the year, um, but it's much more volatile, right? So your stops are way wider. And the short-term P&L smooths out the medium-term book. This is the way to run FX. We've been doing it for 30 years. I recommend you think about it yourselves. It takes a little, little, little bit of discipline, and you got to be sure to do what you say and say what you do. One of the reasons we do this video is every day I say what I'm going to do, and then I re-listen to it so I can do what I have just said. Okay, I'm babbling on on like a holiday short and Monday. Good luck out there, people. Make some dough. Catch you tomorrow.